Proteus VSM is a unique product, including both a system-level simulator and a comprehensive debugging environment for your embedded designs. This video will demonstrate how to get a basic embedded project simulating and will then show you various ways to set breakpoints and debug your project. To start a new VSM project, click the New Project button on the home screen to launch the wizard. On the first screen, enter your project name and type. The second screen allows you to apply a template to your schematic if required. For this project, no PCB is required, so the wizard can be left at the default of no PCB layout. Selecting Create Firmware Project will activate the drop-down boxes and allow you to specify the microcontroller and compiler you are going to use. If the compiler we are going to use is not listed in the drop-down box, clicking the Compilers button will open a dialog of all compilers compatible with Proteus. From here we will be presented with the options to download or visit the relevant website of our desired compiler. Once installed, the Check, Check All buttons will rescan the system for the compiler and configure it for use with Proteus. Next we can create a skeleton program by selecting the Quick Start Files option. Finally, review our options and click Finish to start our project. We'll start as simple as possible and light an LED. Click on Pick Devices and select an LED and resistor. These can be found easily by typing descriptions into the keyword search box. We can then double click on them to add them to the parts bin for us. Left click on the device to start placement. Use the plus and minus keys to rotate as required and left click again to complete placement. Place a ground terminal and wire up the devices to the MCU. To adjust the resistor value, right click on the resistor and select Edit Properties. Set the resistance to 470 ohms and change model type to digital. Now we need to write the controlling firmware to light the LED. Proteus allows us to type our code directly into the project and will automatically associate the code file with the MCU for simulation purposes. When ready, go to the Build menu on the toolbar and select Build Project. The output window at the bottom will display the build progress and tell us when our code has been compiled. Using the Play button at the bottom of the screen, we can run our simulation and check that it is working. Likewise, use the Stop button to end the simulation. To make things a little more interesting, we can expand the design to contain a bank of LEDs and add a switch to enable or disable their use. We could also write a few more lines of code to set up an interrupt driven program for flashing the LEDs in sequence. Following any changes in our code, we can compile in the same way and then press play. When running the resulting simulation, controls such as the switch are interactive, allowing us to fully access the project design. Proteus has a feature known as Active Pop-Ups that allow all areas of interest, both codes and devices, to be viewed at the same time. To use this, select the Active Pop-Ups icon from the left-hand menu and then draw a box around the areas of interest. We can draw multiple boxes if we wish to view more than one component during simulation. When you play the simulation again, the tagged areas will be displayed in Proteus VSM and are fully interactive just as they were when viewed on the schematic. When the simulation is paused, we can double click to set a breakpoint in the code at a point of interest. For example, if we set a breakpoint in the timer interrupt handler, we can single step to catch the port right that flashes the LEDs on and off. 
During single step, the variables window will update to reflect the current state of play. We can also launch the watch window from the debug menu to see values of a specific port. Registers and SFRs can then be added to either by name or address. Once an item has been added, we can set up a breakpoint based on a particular value for that item. In our example, setting the trigger to be the overflow point of the timer count register will pause the simulation just before we enter the timer interrupt routine. This technique can be used either with or instead of the breakpoints to allow greater control of the code evaluation process. Various other elements can also be monitored in Proteus. These are available from the debug menu as well. So far, we have used breakpoints in the firmware to stop the simulation of the hardware. In Proteus, we can also use a hardware condition to cause a breakpoint. To do this, first turn off any breakpoints we have set, including the watch window, and return to the schematic layout. Select Probe Mode from the icon toolbar and place the probe at the location for analysis. Like placing components, the plus and minus keys will allow rotation for best placement. Edit properties to set the conditions we are after. In this case, trigger value is high and run the simulation again. We can see the probe has paused the system at the point the LED receives the input signal. All the usual step functions are still available to us at this point. Finally, we can use the diagnostic interface to set a breakpoint. Start by launching the configure diagnostics command in the debug menu. Here we can control what log reports Proteus will display and also if we want any events to pause the program. Since our little test program is interrupt driven, we can turn on full diagnostics for the processor interrupts and set interrupt events to trigger a breakpoint. This can be used to break and step through the pin change interrupt logic that controls the switch and also the timer overflows interrupt logic that controls the flashing of the LEDs.